Hey, Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to get your uh, nuggets of wisdom here. <laughs> Anna has uh, studied at the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, and then she worked in apparel industry designing swimsuits for 10 years. And now she makes a living with print and demand. And Anna has graciously agreed to come here today and share with us her wisdom and her uh, expertise. Thank you so much. Now, Thank you. Yay. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Like, how did you come to do this? Sure. Um, so I was working for quite a while in the fashion industry here in Los Angeles as a swimwear designer, like you mentioned. And um, I got laid off. But before I got laid off, I'd kind of started a small business on eBay. I was selling um, wardrobe from TV and movies. And so when I got laid off, I thought, well, let me just try to expand on this and keep going so I don't have to get another job. I kind of gave myself about a month or so wow. to get up and running. See, I, I mean, I'd already been making a good amount of money every month on top of my regular job. So I thought, well, if I commit full time, maybe, you know, I can just keep going and not go back to work for someone else. So yeah. I kept going with that and it just kept evolving that I started selling clothing, like designer clothing on eBay and then I started doing it on Amazon because Amazon, as you know, kind of rules the world right now. So it's like, if you can't beat them, why not join them, join right? Them. So, so uh, it was that stuff yeah. that you already designed or was that existing stock that you had? Existing. So, yeah, I found like a place in Los Angeles that is a wholesale kind of liquidation. So what that means is I find a pair of jeans that retails for like over a hundred dollars and I would get them for five dollars or three dollars. So Why? you know, it's um easy money flipping and then I start doing that wholesale as well. But um later on my sources here in LA they just started changing. Some of them went out of business. Some of them just became not as good, not as many good things. And so I thought, well, you know, I need to kind of explore something else. So I had friends in this business. We have a lot of groups on Facebook. So mm -hmm. the people that I was friends with who were doing the eBay and Amazon, they said, there's this new thing called Merch by Amazon, you know, check it out. And basically, um, in a nutshell, you create your designs and Amazon prints them on a t-shirt, Amazon yeah. ships them to the customer. If there's any issues, Amazon handles all the customer service and returns. So you don't have any customer interaction. There's yeah. zero money up front because That's amazing <laughs> yeah you just submit your designs to amazon amazon doesn't charge you a fee and then they pay out in royalties so i thought well that sounds kind of cool and um the kind of sad part of the story was my husband had cancer at the time and so i was thinking well i'm not able to work as much right now because i'm going to his doctor's appointments or spending time with him in the hospital so I didn't really have time to do the apparel business as much as I needed to anyway. So I thought, well, I'll just kind of start this on the side and see what happens. So I didn't really get super serious about it for a while. But then I saw other people doing well and they kept talking about it. So I thought, okay, I'm going to commit and really push forward. So I kept pushing forward and then I I was really grateful. It started to become really successful. So, um Wow. When, unfortunately, my husband pant, passed of cancer, but it allowed oh, me to get, yeah, it allowed me to get through that hard time. You know, financially, it really helped and it allowed me to be at home with him because, oh, wow. you know, so if sorry I, to hear yeah, that. I didn't know that. Thank you. Oh, man. Yeah. If I had um, been working for a corporation, usually if something happens, they give you a week or two off and that's it. You know, yeah. if that, you know. So it's like I could be with him every day. Every day we went to get our coffee together when he was able to. Yeah. And, you know, that was important to spend time with your loved ones. So that enabled me, you know, to do that. So I'm, you know, really grateful to yeah. have Merch by Amazon. So, yeah. I mean, I recommend it to everyone. A lot of people, I, I've even coached some people with um, getting into the business and, um, you know, it's it's interesting that some people, they really said, I don't want to do that because they didn't understand what it was. A lot of people think it's like 
uh, MLM, which is multi-level marketing, which means like selling Mary Kay or Avon. You know what I'm talking about, right? Like these people, they don't understand what it is. So you think you're, they're just trying to get you into some shady business. But, yeah. you know, there's, there's no upfront cost. All it is is money out. They do charge you, like if your item gets returned, then they take that money from your profits. But, yeah, I which mean, makes sense. It's small. Is, it's not a big deal. How is it different to Redbubble? So I hear Redbubble, you know, like when we think print on demand, immediately Redbubble. Now, is that similar mm -hmm. or is that different? Yeah, it's um, the same concept. The thing about Redbubble is there's more products. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Merch from Amazon right now, what they do is it's T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, that kind of thing. And then they added recently pop socket, the little phone grip thing. They added okay. phone cases, tote bags, and pillows. So that's where we're at. Whereas Redbubble, they have a lot more products. Like they have stickers and leggings and, you know, little, I don't know, it's like home products or whatever you want to call it. Um, what about the, thing, the percentages that you get on sales? Yeah, I mean, Redbubble, I don't get as much money and I'm... I have to look at the percentages because I haven't really looked closely lately. But the thing about Amazon is it's such a giant, it's like such a household name that That's people true. come there to shop for their everyday things. That because is true. Because if you have, yeah, if you have Prime, you're like, well, I need to buy, like, I need to buy some stuff for my, like, special additive for my dishwasher for hard water. I'm like, I'll just get it, you know, Prime. Yeah. So it's like, well, they're there. They're like, oh, let me get something else, you know. So it's you know, free shipping. So That's you tend true. to get better traffic and more customers there. That sounds yeah. amazing. Like it makes total sense what you said about it's findability, right? Like people go on Redbubble mm -hmm. when they want an artist design, maybe a punny t-shirt. But when they go on yeah. Amazon, like if I'm buying even clothes for my kids, uh, I don't, you know, I'm like, I live in the mountains. So for me to drive mm -hmm. to a shop is, is a big deal. And I have to get the kids ready. So I go on Amazon and I say, you know, yeah. cute boys t-shirt and I mm -hmm. would get a result. And that could be your shirt that you've designed. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I would just buy exactly. it. I wouldn't even know that it's really print and demand. Like that makes yeah, you no wouldn't. sense. Yeah. All they see really is your brand. They don't realize kind of the backstory behind it. Yeah. So. Now, what do you, like, what do you think allowed you to be successful in this? Because yeah. I know, like, if, if you just randomly throw up some designs, uh, and just cross your fingers and hope that it sells, that's not how it works. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would imagine that your background, of course, understanding the fashion industry, but what are some of the specific things that you're doing, if you can share, that make you successful in this? Yeah, I think what it is, is, it's understanding the difference between um, online sales and retail sales. So, like, if someone were to walk into a store, they see a shirt or whatever hanging on the rack, and they're like, oh, that's cute. I like it. I'll get that. But if you're uh, going to buy something online or the customer is online, they will never, ever see your thing unless they uh, find it by the keywords. Like, the keywords mm. are really critical because... You know, it's just like a needle in the haystack. Amazon has millions and millions of things, so they'll never find it. So the the connection is understanding how to connect with your customer um, through keywords and understanding okay. trends. So um, mm -hmm. just I'll kind of give like a little example. There's a yes, guy I know, please. he's a commercial artist, and he's a really good artist. He had his um, artwork hanging like on banners and like little wrappers for trash cans and displays for the city of Westwood, which is here in Los Angeles is by uh, UCLA, big university. So it's like the whole little city has his artwork up and he sold that things like um, one of those major home type stores like West Elm or Crate and Barrel or something like that. He okay. sold on shower curtains and pillows and all this stuff. So he is a full-time artist, but then he tried to get onto merch by Amazon and he just kind of seemed to grasp the concept, no matter how right. hard he tried. He's always frustrated. So bottom line, it doesn't matter how good your art is. If no one can find it, then right. you won't sell. So it's kind of like the tree. If the tree falls in the forest and doesn't make a sound, but I say if your shirt is on Amazon and you don't have the right keywords and, you know, the right audience, people will never find it. So I guess to launch into how to do that. 
Um, I mean, my thing is being in fashion industry, you, you understand where the trends are coming from, right? So, yeah, um, that's the million dollar question. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, can you the, give us some advice on sure. that? Sure. So the main key I would say is kind of define your audience because you need to be able to connect with them and understand what they want. So, you know, if I was selling to someone like my mom, it's completely different than, and she's 70 years old, selling to a teenager or 20 something. Yeah, so totally. lately I've been selling for the younger audience, like twenties and teens. So you think, okay, what, what are they looking at? Who, who influences them? So, yeah. you know, back in the day, it was all like when I was a teenager, it was all about and 20 something MTV, you know, who, who the famous musicians are. And what are they wearing? And what is the style and the look of the video? So now we don't really have MTV anymore. It's just reality shows. So I like to look at the major artists and you have to kind of seek them out on YouTube. But okay. like I've been influenced by like Machine Gun Kelly or like um, Post, Le sorry, Post, Leon. Post Malone, uh, you know, but some of these artists, they're really 100% on the money with the fashion and the trends. And people look to them to see, or like Youngblood or something like that, see what they're wearing. And that translates to my art that I'll say, I'll, I'll be like, look at this color. I saw MTV, that award show, and everybody's wearing purple. I'm like, okay. And it was a certain shade of purple, almost mm. like your sweater, a little brighter, like I call the orchid. Okay, and that's really so interesting. I'm like, yeah. yeah, but I'm it also like, that's... a little bit takes the pressure off, right? Because at least you have a starting mm -hmm. point. Like that's really yeah, good. So, yeah. So you see the colors. So like right now, like it's like I'm seeing like bright lime green. I'm seeing this bright purple. Those are two of my best selling colors that I will do a design and do all different colors. But I'm seeing that neon green and that orca purple are like topping out. And that's because I'm seeing them, you know, in these music videos or famous people wearing them. Yeah. So it's like you need to, yeah, think about trends like when, when I was working in the fashion industry, um, we part of our job was doing the research, you know, for um, finding what the trends were. So one of the things we did was a lot of shopping. So we, you know, living in Los Angeles, it was really nice. Um, now things are online, but I like to kind of see in the store because you have this kind of at a glance, you can see everything by going from store to store to store. And when you go from store to store to store, you'll see what's repeating. So you'll be like, yeah. I keep seeing tie-dye. I go to the next store, tie-dye again. I go to the next store, tie-dye again. Or maybe it's an animal. Like you'll go into a children's store. Like here we have a store called Limited 2 for girls, children. And it's like, okay, the animal, sloth or a unicorn, you know, those are trendy yes. animals. When I was a kid, nobody knew what a sloth was. No, you know, not at all. It. Not me That's either. <laughs> Yeah, once you, you train your eye to see what's repeating as you go from place to place to place, like, you know, that's kind of really key. But the other thing is, um, it's also the, the what will um, cause a success or failure is that you have to understand, like, the biggest thing I learned in fashion industry is it's not about you. Because people yes. are very personal as artists. Like, there's this artist, she's like, I, you know, be kind because us artists were sensitive about our sh. I won't say the word, but we're sensitive <laughs> about our stuff. Okay, yes. <laughs> so um, we we treat our art like it's our personal baby. And when I first started working in the fashion industry, yeah, like we're so design, important. <laughs> yeah, I would design something. I thought, and if it didn't like make it through to like final stages or production, I would be sad. I'd be like, oh my gosh, they didn't like it enough to. Continue, like, oh, I'm not but, good, right? Not mm -hmm. really. That's not about you. Yeah. It's about, yeah, yeah, the design. So the thing is, it's like I realized over time that we would design, you know, hundreds of things, but only a small percentage made the cut. And that's just part of the process. But the other thing to learn is, okay, it's the reason it's not about you is because it's about the customer. So you have to really define who your customer is. And what it is they want, because that's how you're going to make that sale. So some people, they say, oh, I don't like that. I think that's dumb. I think that's stupid and mature. But guess what? It doesn't really matter if you think it's dumb 
it matters if the customer likes it. Because, I mean, one example is one of the number one best-selling shirts, uh, maybe five years or, I don't know, a few years back on Amazon was, it said, guess what? Chicken butt. And so it, it literally said, guess what? <laughs> there was an arrow pointing, you know, like, chicken butt. And <laughs> I'm like, that's really stupid. Who would buy that? But, um, you know, people... Honestly, you you don't know what they're gonna like, and so you you have to think, okay, what is it they want? They want humor. So a lot of yes, what sells on yes. merch by Amazon is humor. So like funny shirts, humorous jokes, puns. So that's another good tip. Is lots of times mm-hmm. I'll put my art on a shirt, and just by itself, it's not really selling. But then I'll find some you know kind of slang or trendy meme like you know you can look at the memes for what's trending right now and you'll see you know a joke or humor and so I'll find a way to work that into my artwork you know to kind of make a joke about whatever the subject matter is a little pun it needs to be really short and punchy you know to go on shirt and then people want those you know funny shirts so lots of times when you integrate text when, this is for t-shirts, not for really phone cases or yeah. that kind of thing, tote bags. But um, when you integrate humor and text, then that creates more keywords to enable people to find your stuff. So if it's like a trending joke, like, for example, there was um, a few years back, there's some girl that said this thing on a talk show. She said, cash me outside. How about that? So or how about that? Which basically meant, like, catch me outside, I'm going to fight you. You know, stupid, right? But it got really popular. And so I just made so many versions of that idea. But I said, like, what did I say? Something for Mardi Gras and all this stuff. And it took off and I sold a bunch. You know, it was always catch me doing something, you know. And it was funny and people liked it. So it's like if you identify what the trends are in humor and kind of, you know, um, work that into your art, then that that will make it a lot easier sell than just selling on the art itself because people are searching for these catchphrases. I mean, yeah. you need to understand what's copywritten or if someone owns mm-hmm. something. Like, you know, you can't just do something that's like, just do it or something because that's like owned by Nike. I mean, that was an old one, of course. But yeah, right. you need to understand, check copyright on everything. But having humor and like trending phrases, I'd say, Trending quotes and phrases that will help. Like one of the ones that I kind of noticed lately is um, there's a meme, and you'll see the first window will say how it started, and the next one is how it's going. So it could either be like something really great at the beginning and then not so great at the end, or right. it could reverse. Like it could I the opposite. Yeah, yeah the I should post a little example on your group that I did. So like I did one that's like a little pretty happy unicorn that says how it's going, or sorry, how it started, and then a sad, dead-eyed unicorn that says how it's going now. You know, so in other words, it's kind of like, everything was great, and then COVID happened, and now I'm sad and unhappy. Yeah, so, and I think um, we can relate emotionally as humans to yeah. those things, so, like, mm-hmm. that's why it's appealing, because we, yeah, we can relate. Yeah, so okay. that's, like, a big trend. So if you can identify these trends and then work it to your artwork, that that helps. So you mentioned going to the shops and seeing what's repeating. Uh, I mm-hmm. would imagine doing online shopping, too. Like, if you don't have, if you don't yeah. live in L.A. or New York and you don't have mm-hmm. those shops, you can check their latest collections online. Uh, yeah, exactly. Even Amazon. Now, what are some mm-hmm. of the other ways to spot the trends? Like, in this sea of millions gazillions of search results like even on google yeah. you know is it worth going mm-hmm. and searching you know t-shirt trends or is that even not like is that too specific i don't know like how would you go yeah. about doing that i mean sometimes like um that would be really broad i mean you could do it just to get ideas but a few things you can do is i think it's important to kind of like um define your niche like to to get yeah. into some niches for your designs so instead of trying to target just the general market, target a specific subset. So, um, you know, like my thing is right now, I'm kind of doing this pastel, I call it pastel goth kawaii. So it's mm-hmm. cute, but it's kind of creepy and Halloween, like, but, you know, so that's kind of, you know, a niche and stuff. But whatever it is you do, just 
you know, stick to a little corner of the market. Don't try to get too broad because it's going to be easier. And the best idea I can find is like find some market that's not really tapped. So maybe, you know, it's something new that's coming out or some weird little hobby that not too many people know about, but they still like it. So that way you don't have competition. So my method, yeah, my method would be I will go and I use a tool called Merchant Farmer. It's a subscription pay monthly. I'm not sure what the price is because I think they raised it since I started. But um, it allows you to look and see. You could type a keyword and see what um, shirts are ranking on Merch by Amazon. And there's like a way you can get another little tool. It's called the extension with Google Chrome extension or something. Okay. And it will show you what the ranks are for Amazon. So every product what's, what's on it Amazon. Again? Uh, Merch Informer. Merch Informer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Cool. Every product on Amazon has a rank. So if a product is number one, that means it's the best selling product in its category. Um, the higher the rank, the worse it's doing. So I like to look for products like um, under, under like 300. T- 200 or 300,000 as a rank. And I find like those are doing pretty decent and anything lower than that, like, you know, 50,000 or 4,000, even better. But the idea is I kind of go in there and analyze, but I watched um, your video yesterday about, um, you know, kind of planning your designs. And the key is you're not, you don't want to copy what's there. Cause that's, yeah. well, for one, that's not really a cool thing to do, but for two, um, you're not going to stand out copying. You need to lead, not follow. So the idea I do is I see, I just go through those things to see what's selling in whatever I'm searching for my search terms. Or you can also do a general search, which will just show you the top things that are selling in general, like out of everything. So I'll do both. But, um, so I kind of take a pen and paper and just write down, okay, what are some of the trends I'm seeing? So one thing could be like, say, tie dye. One thing could yeah. be a certain animal, like a sloth. Like sloth. One thing, yep. yeah, could be color. Another thing could be like a certain phrase, like um, that's trending at the moment. Um, you know, and maybe like uh, print or you know various motifs that are trending. So I kind of combine all these things, compile the list, and then I almost would do like a set of flashcards and. Um, list the trends and then you can put them together like your dice yeah. method so it's kind of like yes. uh, you have a color trend and then you have a seasonal trend like Halloween and then you have like a, a trend like tie-dye and so I'm like I'm gonna make mm-hmm. a Halloween tie-dye with a trending phrase so the more um, trending things you put together the better wow like, you that's know, so, brilliant yeah yeah I so totally, like I totally like, see that yes mm-hmm yeah, because sometimes what there is is there's something that's super trendy, but then no one did it in the combination that you're thinking of. So, like, I right. I saw, like, you know, some kind of uh, theme, like, it's related to a country. I don't, not exactly a country. It's, it's a location. I don't really want to reveal what my idea is, but the point is I saw that nobody did that theme with a tie-dye. So then I put a tie-dye and it did really well So because the tie-dye is trending right now. So it's like, you know, just mixing and matching exactly like your little, um, you know, dice thing, that's a real winning success. And that's kind of what we learned as a designer is, you know, you, you put together boards of all the trends and then, you know, how can we take a trend from here and a trend from there or an idea from here or there? And sometimes it's oh, like the it. quality yeah, like the style of the artwork or the um, style of line work, because sometimes you have really fine line work, you know, sometimes it's like a heavy outline, which is in the kawaii stuff. So it's like understanding what it should feel like is important, like the feel of the art. The feel of the art needs to go with, you know, the theme of what you're doing. It has to make sense. You don't want to come out of left field. So like yes. if the theme is pretty should have a light hand and, you know, be pretty, you know, if it's scary or spooky, you know, it it needs to read that. You don't want to get too far out there. It needs to be what that customer expects for the trend or for the idea. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. 
Uh, you yeah. talked a little bit about uh, doing SEO keyword research with Merch mm -hmm. Informer. Now, yeah. what are, like, it, let's say, okay, let's step back. Now, if I'm doing Google search or Keywords Everywhere search or some other platform, would it be similar or would it be different doing, so doing research for products. Let's say I put out a YouTube video and I do keyword mm -hmm. research for that. I'm looking for a specific thing. Now, if I'm doing keyword research for products, what would be the strategies there specifically for products? Yeah, I mean, for trends. One thing, one thing you can do, there's a few different things, but like, let's say you had some general product idea that you just want to see what they're looking for. So, um, let's say you had some product for cats or it's about cats or something. Maybe just type in either to Google search or Amazon cats and then see what comes up after okay. it, you know, because they call it predictive text. Yeah, because they're oh, going to. Right. Yes. Yeah, you know, they're going to show. So maybe they'll be like cat tree, you know, the thing for them climbing, cat litter, cat box, cat carrier, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe that will lead you down a path of. Okay, you see, if you're getting that predictive text, you're seeing what it is the customer is looking for. So, you know, at one point I was looking for, um, I don't know, somehow I found, I stumbled upon a really great trend just by predictive text. So, nice. so, you know, maybe you see with cats, um, it's like a special thing. I don't know, like those little backpacks that cats can ride in. So maybe you're like, that is the hot item right now for cats. Like they have a little clear window. So your cat looks like an astronaut and you strap right. it to your back. Maybe you see it. But so maybe you're like, well, that's cool. Everyone wants this right now. So I will draw this as my art. So it's almost like you kind of want to um, develop your ideas before you develop your art. Like see yes. what is it the customer wants and then put the art out to go with it as opposed to making your art first and then try to fit it, Trying to fit you know, it. Yeah, into a so category. True. I mean, I do a little of both, but um, yeah. you want to see what, what they're after. So I think there is some kind of keyword research tool on Google. I think it's called Google Trends maybe. So okay, you can yeah. see like um, type of keyword and it will show you kind of how popular it is over time. So we'll say like, you know, it'll show you this bar graph, right? Or not bar graph, like, you know, the graph with the kind of, um, yeah, I'm trying trends. to get my hand in here, yeah, the like wave. It. Yeah, so um, so you'll see maybe it was, like, really popular, like, three years ago, and now it's not very popular anymore, and it's on the decline. So you're like, okay, well, this was cool a while back, but no one cares about it anymore. So mm -hmm. that will give you an idea, or maybe it's starting to rise on the chart, like, this is a brand new trend, yeah. um, you know. But, I mean, I will use the internet a lot and just observe what people are showing and talking about on social media, like Facebook, what are the memes people are putting out. Or, like, um, mm -hmm. on Instagram, there's, like, a little thing that you can um, just kind of enter. I mean, it'll show you what it thinks you would like based on your searches, but then you can also enter keywords, and then it will show you what's coming up first, like, as most popular. On so Facebook? those most popular... Sorry, no, the, no, this oh, is Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, so those kind of things, um, it will show you, you know, exactly what what's most popular. So yeah. top searches. Hashtag. So then you'll probably be like, okay, some of these are, and it will even show you like for the hashtags how many how many results there are. So mm -hmm. that's good. If you don't have many results, maybe it's not that popular. But then again, not having too many results could be a good thing because not that could allow you to get yeah. into uh, on crowd niche, maybe it's like a rising trend that no one really tackled because like, there's one thing that I knew it would be really popular, but nobody tackled it yet. Cause it was just a combination of like this location, you know, kind of trends for location and a tie dye and no one really did it at all. So I'm like, okay, I'm the first. So I'm cool that no one did it. So it's either like you're first to market or you're jumping into a popular thing. So it's kind of like combining those two things. That sounds good. I, I would imagine yeah. it helps that you are able to spot the trend. But I would also mm -hmm. say that it comes with experience. I, I yeah. Mean, would you agree? Totally. And it's like sometimes, hold on, my child's in. Yeah. I'm on the um, video, okay? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Life Hashtag work from home. I mean, I just had a rubbish truck pass by and I'm like, oh, yeah. why did it have to happen Super loud. today? <laughs> it's <Right> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's real life. But um, so let me see. So tell me, what did you just refresh uh, so, my mind? Sorry. Uh, what did I just say? Uh, it was... So it comes with experience. So spotting yeah. the trend, you know, you, you get experience. But like, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what it was. I got it. Yeah, so basically what it is, is like, I mean, don't be afraid to like, analyze your work and kind of take note of what's successful and what's not. And if something's not successful, don't keep on hammering it into the ground. Like, don't try to force it. You need to really analyze your things. Like, so, you know, people who are successful, they understand that you need to, it's like if you have a business, you look at the numbers in Yes. So you say, okay, I kind of review my sales and I say, okay, these are the things that are doing really well and I'll list them out, you know, on paper and other things, if they're not even showing in my sales, I'm like, I'm not going to keep pursuing these things because right. no one is buying them. But anything that is doing well, that's my cue to expand on them. So sometimes I'll just keep going with more colorways, um, different versions of it, like, yeah. You know, maybe there's a trend. I'll be like, okay, how can I do this differently? So then I'll go online to different, you know, clothing sites and say, you know, type in whatever the trend is, like say it's tie-dye and be like, okay, how did somebody else do it? How did this person do it? How did this person do it? And, you know, look and see how can I do this idea a million different ways to capitalize yeah. it. And sometimes with my art, it's just new colorways or, you know, uh, new ways of doing it. Um, you know, so that way you get more bang for your buck. You only did that one design, but you maybe have 15 colorways, <laughs> maybe not that yeah. many, but, you know, maybe I have five colorways or something and different, you know, spins on it. And, you know, then maybe I go back to that person who I found to be like inspirational I'll be like, well, what are they doing now? Like, so my favorite artist right now, um, musical artist is machine gun kelly so i'll be like Mm -hmm. well i saw he had a little thing out where he created a music video that's like in a musical movie form so i'm like i'm gonna watch this i'm gonna take some photos i'm gonna take some notes and see what are they wearing what are the looks what are the trends how can this be interpreted in my artwork so brilliant yeah that's like my process and i also like i enjoy looking to give feedback. So as an artist, you can't just operate in a bubble. A lot of people, they have these really abstract ideas as an artist. Somebody told me, she's like, I'm making this cat, and her name is Petonia Penkelbottom, and she's an aristocrat, or aristocrat, or, you know, some really obscure thing. I'm like, well, that's great, but see you anyone looking yeah. online for that? But, you yeah. know, so it's like, um, so what I do is I enjoy putting my art online to see what kind of reaction it gets. If people are really liking it and saying, oh, my gosh, this is cool, then I'll do more of it. If nobody cares about it, they're just like, eh, you know, a few people like it, but it's not a great reaction. I'm like, okay, this isn't what my target market wants. Like, I will post in a group that is for my target market. Mm -hmm. So, and I see the reaction. So, if it's, like, not a good reaction, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to waste my time on this. Move on. Yeah. But don't take it personal, right? You just, like, okay, well, next. (laughs) Totally. But, I mean, don't be afraid to let the customer tell you what they want because that's really the best way. So, some people are like, you should, I made some uh, Christmas prints, and you probably saw them in your group, I think. And people are like, let's we have this as wrapping paper and they asked me like so many people asked me that I need this as wrapping paper I need this I need this and I need this so I was like I don't really want to do wrapping paper that sounds like a hassle and a low profit margin product eh. but I was like I found and I couldn't find a place that had a good price but finally I found you know one that was affordable for the customer because it was about I found it was like eight dollars a roll and other places it's gonna be like twenty dollars a roll which No one wants $20 wrapping paper, but they'll pay $8 American. So I was like, okay. And then people bought it. So I did pretty well. I mean, I don't make a lot of my, I made about 50 bucks over the Christmas season. If I started earlier, it would be better. But, you know, Mm -hmm. so that was worth it. People said, I want this product. So if a customer says. For next year too, you know. Yeah. If a customer says, I want this, then you're like, okay. You know, I never even thought 
to do wrapping paper. That was their idea. So yeah, that's um, brilliant. Yeah, people also said we want a blue colorway. We want a blue colorway. So I'm like, okay. I never even thought to do a blue colorway because I didn't think that was like desirable in their eyes. But you know, so I'm like, okay, here's your blue colorway. But I will send like messages anyone who says I want this. You know, okay, here's a link. Some of the Facebook groups. They do not allow advertising. Some of them do. You have to just follow the rules. And of course. So yes. you don't get the boot by being yeah. like overly spammy or advertising. But sometimes they actually come out. And I'm not, you know, I follow the rules that you're not allowed to advertise in some of these. And they come out and they say, I need this as a t-shirt. Where can I buy your stuff? Do you have yeah. an Instagram? And so I always have the Instagram and Facebook that are, um, you know, with my brand name. So they, I will add that little signature so my, to my art. So even though I'm not advertising, and then they'll be like, oh, I found your um, page, you know, because I searched it. So if you want a brand name, you know, make sure you have it so people can find your stuff. The br- even yeah, without you having to message them directly, they can find it on your own or by Google search or whatever. Yeah, that's really good advice. Like always brand your work because you don't know where mm-hmm. it's going to go. Pinterest, people ripping it, you always brand your work. Yeah. Now, and what advice yes. would you give to someone who is just starting out? Like, let's say tomorrow I decide to get on either Merge or any other print on demand. Uh-huh. Uh, like, what would you say is the best way to start to see traction? You know, because I know yeah, it can I mean, take like weeks and months to see any sales. Yeah. Now, how to get there quicker? Yeah. I mean, I guess what you want to find is like, you know, uh, if you're trying to sell your art, think about um, who the customer is for your art and yes. their age and, you know, kind of create like a profile for them mm-hmm. because you, the key is connecting your art to the customer who wants it. Um, that's kind of the hard part. So, you know, once you define that customer, then you can kind of start looking at things that they're interested in online, you know, okay. so... Let's pretend your art is all about cats. So, you know, just kind of see, well, what kind of things are these cat people looking for? You know, like, what are the cat memes right now? What are the cat trends? And maybe you'll see, I mean, I really like the idea of the memes for heading on a trend, you know, that maybe you're like, okay, well, here's, here's you know, a good cat meme. So I'm going to work this idea into my artwork, you know, or like whatever. Like memes, you mean? Like, it would, like those animated glyphs and stuff um, like- what i mean by a meme is like it's kind of like um like a little picture and then there will be like some words written on the picture and it's something humorous um i'll have to i'll post it maybe later in your group uh idea for people but yeah. you know so it's 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 a picture and it like people post them on facebook it's like a picture with text, words on like it which is like boss. a little joke yeah. yeah, so, you know, it could be a photograph. Usually they're a photograph, but it could okay. be an illustration. But anyway, um, you know, so the idea is maybe, you know, the first step to find your customer. Because, you know, if your art is kawaii, sometimes it's very childlike. So, you know, it's for a young at heart person. Yes. So, you know, think you about what it. sort of stuff they want. So maybe you think, well, who else is doing something similar to me? And how are they marketing it? So maybe you look around on Instagram or online and see, you know, what kind of um, ways these other people are marketing, you know, how they're setting up their Instagram or what kind of keywords they're using or what kind of subject matter they're doing. And then that can give you an idea of, okay, you know, this person is really, you can see how successful they are by, you know, the size of their Instagram followers. And you can say, okay, this person is successful. Why? And then, you know, maybe it's a funny thing, phrases they're using or, you know, what kind of concepts. So you don't want to copy them, but it's just to get some rough ideas. Yeah, you get and inspiration. Then, yeah, same thing I talked yeah. about. And, using and then I guess artists. the second, yeah. yeah, the second thing would be to look at trends. And then the other thing is like, um, look online for similar things to what you're doing. Like I will look on Amazon for people are selling in my same categories and see, okay, what, what kind of keywords are they using? Like if you see a good rank on something that's similar to your thing on Amazon, like similar to what you're trying to do, um, look at what keywords they're using because there was one, um, 
idea I found and I saw there's certain keywords that they're using that other people weren't. And so I started using those keywords and that really, I think that really propelled my sales. That I wouldn't have thought to use those keywords, but when I did, people were finding it. So it's like, you don't want to copy someone's exact phrasing because yeah. Amazon will be like, no, that's not okay. Or someone can report you. But the it's words by themselves anyway. are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the words by themselves are fine. You know, so yeah. it's just like, you just don't want to put them in the exact same order or the same wording, but a word by itself is fine. Just make yeah. sure everything is um, not already a copyright or whatever, because even some words have been copywritten, so you just don't want to have an issue with that. But but that's kind of my method. Like, I'll, I'll have an idea and they'll see, well, who else is doing this and what keywords are they using and what's the outcome? So the outcome is the rank. So if there's a good rank, then you're like, okay, this person understands what the keywords are um, that are working. And then yeah, if I, it's so kind of like hit your wagon to a star, keywords. right? So you kind of do what they're doing in terms of like, you know, for that particular category, or maybe, you know, you'll just see something like Buzzfeed news or, you know, mm. get your trends, like really see what is sometimes something will blow up over the internet, like on social media, you see it across all Facebook or Instagram and everyone has a version of it. Like right now it's uh, from America. We have Bernie Sanders sitting in a chair with his, you know, mittens kind of just, I can't, I'm not showing my whole body, but you know, he's sitting there and everyone thought that was so funny and they made a million of those. So when you yeah. see something go viral like that, where everyone latches onto it and they all think it's funny, then that's a sign. That's a big trend. I mean, I'm not going to recommend anyone do that because Bernie Sanders is a person. And so he yeah. owns the right to his own image. So if yeah. you were to put that on a shirt, he could see you because he could say, well, did I give you the right to use my image and make money off me? No. So he used his image and made shirts and he donated the money for charity. So that was fine because that's his image. So I just yeah. want to clarify, don't do something just, unless yeah. it's like yeah. legal. So understand the legality of something. So, you know, that's just an idea of a trend that blew up, but, but some trends, it won't work. You know, I'm not going to do that because that's a person who, you know, could sue me, but let's pretend it was a teddy bear sitting in a chair. Then I can yeah, do a version of teddy bear. Yeah, a little bear. Sitting, yep. Yeah, sitting in a chair at the end of a rainbow or whatever. You know what I mean? But Recognizable. You just to, yeah, so yeah. you can still relate to the meme, but it's not like yeah. you're not reusing the image. Yeah, yeah, so the idea is like, um, you know, be aware of, like, don't just sit in your bubble. And, you know, it's hard because here, I know you're better off in Australia, but here in the States, a lot of us, we're not interacting in person socially. So it's like, we're not getting that social interaction to see trends in person, but yeah. online is good because then we all connect that way and see if, if somebody, if everyone gets excited about something at the same time, you know, that's a trend. So, yeah, you know, think about wow. those things. Yeah. Awesome. I feel like super, like I have itchy hands to, uh, to start designing. Get going. Because now, like, Good. you've literally given us a roadmap of where to start. Because that was, like, yeah. my thing. I can draw. I can create designs. But mm -hmm. what? Like, how do I know what sells? And I would yeah. imagine, just like with artwork, I might design 10 things and only one of them would actually hit. And that's okay, mm -hmm. right? Like, what's yeah. your experience with that, like, frequency of the hits? Um, I mean, it's sometimes what I do is I will um, do an artwork, but I'll do it in different variations. Because to be honest, sometimes I do an artwork and just try to sell it by itself, like a phone case or a pop socket, but no one yeah. is interested. But I know there's, like, a phrase that is really popular. So what I'll do, I mean, this is kind of surefire, is just use Merch by, um, sorry, Merch and Farmer, and look at things like the pop sockets or shirts and see what phrases are popular. Like the section of that would be Merch Hunter, which just gives you the generic bestsellers. Write down any kind of phrases. Like, um, I mean, there's one that was kind of a profanity phase and phrase sorry and normally yeah. i want to i don't really like to use that kind of language but yeah I you know mean. i saw opportunities to make some money so i just attached that phrase to like my artwork and 
this sold really well. So it's like, you know, it doesn't have to be bad language, but the, the whole point was I saw it was really, really popular. And so, you know, the artwork by itself wasn't going anywhere, but then the artwork with this phrase kind of was mean, because the idea yeah. of it in my mind was it's, I call it juxtaposition. So you have two opposites. So you have this really cute character, right? And then you have it saying some kind of naughty thing. So then people see the humor in that because it's like a teddy bear saying some, you know, naughty thing. And you're like, wow, well, that's kind of interesting and unusual. Unexpected, yeah. Yeah, you expect the teddy bear to be sweet and innocent, but it's like a naughty teddy bear. So then people think it's funny. You know what I mean? So, So to be honest, like I would definitely look for trending phrases or even, I mean, like, I did well with one is faith over fear. So that's a very clean phrase. You know, a lot of religious people, they like that phrase right now. Yeah, I mean, that so, I can relate. I just put some turtles, a pretty watercolor turtle. I mean, this was not a quite thing. And that sold really well. So, because I saw it as a trending phrase. So, like, I would definitely look at the trending phrases, write them all down, like, just search you know, merch informer for trending phrases and combine those with your art. But please check out copyright first because some yes. phrases, they become copyright. So always check those first. And then once you attach your artwork to that, I feel like you have a better chance of selling. But I mean, for this, it's more, you have to divide it between like t-shirts. T-shirts kind of do well with phrases and novelty mm-hmm. and that kind of funny stuff. And sometimes the pop sockets too, but like a thing like a phone case or the tote bag or the pillow on Amazon, um, prints do really well, you know, like all over patterns. So patterns, with that stuff, yes. you don't need um, a phrase. So I yes. feel like right now patterns are doing really well. So like um, on a phone case or a pop socket, pillow, tote bag, that stuff, don't worry about the phrase. Just Just create a nice pattern that fits the trend and that will be selling, but then just be aware of your keywords that's hitting, you know, a trend right now. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. This is really, really good. Thank you so much for being generous and open and willing to share your, your wisdom. I think you're going to make a difference in many people's lives, including my own. And I'll keep you updated on how it's going. Now, where can people, learn more about you like you feel free to share your shop or your instagram like oh, where do you want people yeah. to go and interact with you um yeah well i mean i'm kawaii creeps on instagram but it's um it's with the creeps it's with a k so that okay. way the kawaii and the creeps are both with a k so they can find me there or i have a facebook page by the same name um but i mean if anyone would like to ask me questions you know like they they heard something in this interview and they had a question or whatever, you know, I'm only help. I mean, like I've mentored people before. Um, I'm, I'm kind of like the tough love kind of mentor that like, okay. you know, yeah. I tell them, you know, please keep your prices high because when you keep your prices high, um, you're basically, you're not, um, you know, you're respecting yourself as an artist. So yeah, I always yes. tell them, please price high. Don't price slow because this isn't Walmart, which is like, you know, low price place. This is Amazon where, or other pod place, you know, online. Um, yeah. So people will have money to spend. So don't, you know, respect yourself as an artist. And if you have something really unique and special exactly. and different that stands out from the crowd, people aren't going to have issue paying that high price. So like, yeah. if I do kind of give you advice, like, you know, please listen and, um, you know, I tell you out of love, not trying to be bossy. Maybe I come off a little bossy and a little, like, I crack the whip, like, do this or else I'm not going to help you. Because if you don't listen to my advice, why am I bothering exactly. to help you? Because if you just want to do it your own way, why did you come to me? So don't come to me unless you're willing to, like, be serious about it. I know that sounds kind of like a I bad think that's attitude. Perfect. but Without, yeah. like loving but firm you know that because that's yeah. that's what we need like actually we wouldn't benefit if you were like oh that's nice i love it when you're thinking mm-hmm. in your head well that won't work like that's not yeah so, so i try beautiful. to be constructive like i'm not rude like i'll tell people okay you know this is why what you're doing isn't working but then here's what you can do to help make it work 
Yes. So, you know, yes. instead of just saying, oh, your designs are terrible, they suck, you know. <laughs> but not, yeah, you actually give not, pointers on, like, how yeah, to fix not, that. Yes. Yeah. It's not oh. really the case that anyone's artwork is bad, because, like I was saying, this friend of mine, he's a he's a professional artist. He does this whole time as a living, but he struggled to make the transition to online because he didn't understand the underlying principles of how it works. Yes, yeah, so important. So there is the artwork and then there is the marketing and selling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. Thank you so much. And I want to be respectful yeah. of your time as well. You know, maybe we'll oh, yeah. do a follow up. Let's see what the response is. Okay, so, that sounds Kawaii great. Thank you. Creeps on Instagram and uh, you've got your Facebook, Facebook. page. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll put all of the links below this video. Okay. And then okay. let's take it from here. Thank you so, okay. so, so, so good. Yeah, all right. Thanks. Have a good day. You too.